causes. So now I would hand it over to Dr. Nipa, who will be telling us about the etiology and pathogenesis of uh, CVI. Next presentation. Uh. उधर कर देना उधर 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 थैंक यू मैम एंड अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल आई एम गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द इटियोलॉजी एंड पैथोजेनेसिस ऑफ सेरिब्रल विजुअल इम्पेयरमेंट हियर विथ कॉल सी वी आई फॉर ईज ओके सो इवन दो मैम हैज kind of defined this condition i'm going to redefine it in a more anatomic way so that as we go along the pathway we can discuss where how and how much is affected okay that's what will give us the etiology and the pathogenesis so let me redefine it as a deficit of visual function caused by damage to any retrogeniculate pathway right so here is the geniculate body the lateral geniculate body and here onwards means the optic radiation the optic lobe and then the connection occipital lobe and then the connections of the occipital lobe onwards which subserve higher visual functions any pathway there affected will give rise to cvi so now what are these higher visual processes at a very brief level just understand a visual scene or an object once it is seen by the occipital lobe or the occipital cortex it will go one of these paths one path is the dorsal stream whereby it will go from the occipital lobe to the posterior parietal cortex from there to the frontal lobe and the motor cortex the frontal lobe actually gives instructions to the eyes and the head to view the scene or view the object and the motor cortex will then act to uh, respond to the object the other path that the uh, will will be taken from the occipital lobe will be the ventral stream whereby the reflex will go through the temporal lobes and that will help identify what the object is and what is its relation to space now coming to the causes the most important and most common cause of cvi is a hypoxic and or an ischemic insult now depending on the time when this insult happens there are various causes antenatal causes intrapartum causes postpartum causes and many other causes the need to know these causes is when you are taking a history you should know what all causes cvi or what all could be a precipitating factor prematurity rop intraventricular hemorrhage respiratory distress stormy intra nicu course all of these factors are very very important these are a list of other factors which are not common but very much there right the hypoxic ischemic insult of prematurity is the commonest but these factors are very much there when you take history again you should be aware of the neonatal hypoglycemia traumatic brain injury congenital malformations of the cns infections of the cns hydrocephalus shunt surgery shunt failure metabolic conditions use of drugs in the mother antenatally especially the narcotics seizure disorder any cardiac condition cardiac congenital cardiac anomaly the surgery for that cardiac arrest or any other vascular event in the prenatal antenatal period could give rise to cvi stroke and cns tumors the list goes on and on there can be many other conditions i am only enlightening the common ones now coming to uh, what is really important how do we what are the manifestations of cvi really will depend on the timing of the insult the degree of the insult the duration of the insult and the mechanism of damage to the developing brain let's go to a very basic level of pathogenesis what really happens when there is hypoxia any of these factors cited above can give rise to hypoxia that hypoxia will damage the blood brain barrier give rise to more hypoxia 
that will release cytokines it will release free radicals and eventually it will give rise to damage of glial cells let's be very time specific what happens in the first trimester in the first trimester the hypoxic insult will res result in congenital malformations the tissue will undergo necrosis there will be no gliosis what will happen in the second to third trimester in the second to third trimester the result of hypoglycemia will repair with gliosis and the commonest area affected is the subcortical white matter giving rise to the classical lesion of periventricular leukomalacia what happens in a term infant both the gray and the white matter are affected most commonly in the parasagittal and the parietal occipital cortex with some kind of severe injuries the thalamus and the basal ganglia can also be involved let's come to the micro um, micro injury or micro processes that happen in a preterm infant we've already discussed that the subcortical areas are most commonly affected what happens there there is active germinal matrix making new neurons and this area has very fragile capillaries so small fluctuations in the blood oxygen levels or the blood uh, carbon dioxide levels will affect the new blood uh, new glial cell formation that can be um, uh, uh, that will react and give rise to tissue loss and or gliosis whereas in a term infant it's usually the watershed zones between the commonly between the uh, middle and the posterior cerebral artery this tissue reacts to hypoxia with loss of auto regulation uh, loss of tissue cortical thinning and that's why dilation of the ventricles now all of this what is it leading to let's just understand what happens clinically when all of these things happen right so let's just go through the four major areas which are affected and what will be the function that will be affected let's look at the optic radiation we already discussed that the classical lesion is a pvl right in that the superior portion of the optic radiation the area which subserves the lower visual field and the subcortical white matter are affected so what happens clinically there will be disturbance of higher visual function and the loss of inferior visual field and just very close to that are the corticospinal tracts so again clinically the child will have cp cerebral palsy what happens if the occipital lobe alone is affected the child will have very poor vision there will be alteration of color contrast and a wearing field effect now what happens beyond right we've already discussed the dorsal and the ventral stream so what happens when the ventral stream is affected the ventral stream we know is a what system right so what will happen is the child will not recognize the parents face the relatives face the child will not recognize objects colors shapes what happens when the dorsal stream is affected the dorsal stream is the wear stream so the child will not be able to place an object in the visual stream uh, in the visual scene he will not be able to pick up a toy that he wants to pick up from a box of toys if you move the object he will not be able to track it or follow it and then coming to the front part if it affects the frontal cortex then the plan to respond to an object will not there so the child will not move his eyes or the face to look at an object as much as you try and if the motor cortex is affected he will not reach out to the object yeah sometimes when you uh, present a nice toy the child reaches for it so all this will not happen now what i discussed is just one simple visual pathway unfortunately in real life it's not so simple there are so many things happening at the same time and it needs a lot of patience to go through this and understand what is happening thank you very much for your time and of course thank you for processing all my visual information